Equinox Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 1, Azimuth of Sunrise and Sunset. This is the first video of our six video series. You really just need any camera and a perfectly aligned east-west street because we're going to be recording the direction or the azimuth of sunrise and sunset. For example, due east or due west. I have to give credit to Daza the Cameraman. His video Flat Earth Equinox Challenge Instructions is very specific about using Google Maps and finding an east-west street, so I used his idea in this video. But his video is a lot more rigorous and uh, detailed than mine, so, I, uh, so please check it out. Preparation and tools. You're going to go to Google Maps and you're going to use the little street view guy, and when you drag him onto the map, you'll see a bunch of glowing streets. And you're going to look for a street that is simply going left and right. So this is a good possibility for an east-west street. And another thing is you're going to have a little camera, or I'm sorry, a little compass icon. And if you click on the little arrows on the left and the right of the compass icon, it will go due north, south, east, or west. So it's very helpful to see the, the appropriate view. Uh, red on this little icon means north, and that's uh, the direction of north if you're facing in the direction of the camera. But when I dropped off my little guy onto this little street, I found that I really didn't have a good horizon. So this is not a good street for me to to do this experiment. Um, you don't have to necessarily have an east-west street. Maybe it's a, a bend in a road, a distinguishing bend in the road that is sort of east-west. So we're going to try this one next. So this is due east and due west, and I get a lot more of the horizon, but it's, it's not really ideal. Unfortunately, in the area that I'm living in, uh, these are three other examples of east-west streets or, or bends and roads that are east-west, and I, I really am not working with very much. So I, I think I'm going to go with this one. So, the next thing we're going to do is try to make careful observations on the date of the equinox. So, you want to look up the time and date of sunrise and sunset from a trusted source. You want to make sure that it is the time and date that is for the equinox. And you want to go to your location at least 10 minutes before sunrise or before sunset. So, the goal is to actually record the exact moment of sunrise or sunset. So, this is sort of the moment we're looking for. Uh, this is a, a beautiful image, but it is not the exact moment. Like, for example, the sun you just can't see it. You can't see it peeking over the horizon. So uh, you, don't want, you don't want moments like this. Uh, and this is the moment of, of sunrise or sunset. Unfortunately, it's sunrise or sunset behind a building. You really want it to be uh, behind the horizon. Now, if you are successful in finding a perfectly east-west street, then you can use a, a, um, like a yardstick and point the yardstick towards the sun uh, right at the moment of sunrise and sunset. Now here's a little uh, little detail. If you were not able to find a perfectly good east-west street, you can actually measure the angle of the street from the map and then kind of do a backwards engineering of, of the angle. But the bottom line is you're going to use a protractor to measure the angle uh, that, this, uh, that the sunrise is, is happening. And then you're going to convert this angle to a bearing. Uh, a bearing simply means you take 360 degrees and you place it onto a compass rose. 90 degrees is due east and 270 is due west. So let's take a look at our data uh, to see if we can determine uh, evidence for either it being a globe or a flat earth. So in the flat earth analysis, uh, we're going to follow a process. We're going to pick a map and just pick your favorite map, either the, the Gleason AE map, the Collignan a diamond map, there's a triple mag tripole magnetic map, there's a bunch of other maps. So, so pick your Pick your map. And then you're going to plot the sun's path above the equator. Divide the sun's path into two equal portions. Because remember, equinox is Latin for equal night. Equal night today. So then you're going to draw two points for the end points of half of the sun's path to represent sunrise and sunset. And you want them to be symmetrical to your location. Then you're going to draw a third point to represent your location and measure the expected angles of sunrise and sunset. So let's go through those steps. So here's a projection very similar to the, to the Gleason map. It's an AE projection. So we draw the, the uh, path of the sun, draw two points representing sunrise and sunset for our third point, which is in the central, uh, central United States. And then if we plot the bearing, it's a 60 degree bearing for sunrise and a 300 degree bearing for sunset. Let's repeat the process for Eastern Australia. Um, the, the angles are a little bit um, more dramatic, 35 degree bearing and 325 degree bearing for sunrise and sunset. And this will be true for just about any area in the southern hemisphere. The globe earth analysis is a little different. 
because in the in the uh, heliocentric model, the sun is 93 mil million miles uh, off screen to the left. And on the date of the equinox, there's no effective tilt to the Earth's axis. So let's place some observers on the Earth, um, five observers, and they're all looking at sunset because the Earth is actually turning to the right in this image. So the, these guys are all, they're in the lit portion, but they're just about to go into the, the unlit portion. So they're all looking at sunset. Now, where are they looking? They are all looking due west. So the sun is actually setting due west, 270 degrees for all the observers. And the sun is also going to rise on the other side of this diagram, 90 degrees, again, for all observers. And this is true for anywhere on the globe. So how did you how did your results stack up? Uh, please, please share them. We've got some message boards set up by Cara Diane, flatearthmath.boards.net. And uh, if you're going to share, all you need to do is give us your location and the bearings of sunrise and sunset. Our next video is going to be on the horizon angle of sunrise and sunset. And again, you can use any camera. Uh, preferably, you need a flat horizon. And if you don't have a flat horizon, like, for example, you have got some you know, trees or something in the way, you can actually use a carpenter's level. Please remember to be kind whenever possible, because it is always possible. Thank you.